Hello. Today I'm in the home of Professor Zand. Two years ago, he went to South America. There he made a remarkable discovery. Professor Zand, can you tell us about your discovery? Yes, we're very excited. What we have discovered is a village near the Andes Mountains, and near the village is a tunnel through part of the Andes that reverses everything left and right when they pass through. And that includes people, objects, and animals, of course. That's a very significant discovery. I believe that the people in the village are now using this to their advantage. Oh, yes, of course. Right near the village is a clothing factory and the objects that could be made left-handed or right-handed are in fact only made in the left-handed style. So here, for example, is a left-handed glove. And this is all they manufacture. Half of these are then taken through the tunnel and they'll come out right-handed. It's then simply a matter of matching up a left with a right to make a pair ready for sale in the shops. And it's the same with trousers. Uh, this, for example, is a left leg from a pair of trousers, and these are the only ones they manufacture. Again, half of them are taken through the tunnel, and they come out to be right-legged, sewn together, pair of trousers. Simplicity itself. That's an amazing discovery. But does passing through the tunnel have a detrimental effect on the materials used, Professor? Oh no, not at all. Here, for example, I have a pair of farmer's boots. Now, this is the left boot, and this is exactly as it was when it was manufactured. This one, of course, was a left boot, but has been passed through the tunnel soon after the manufacturing process, and is now a right boot. And the farmer has worn these for a good six months on his own farm. He very kindly gave us permission to bring these back for analysis, and we have examined them with x-rays, radiation, we've looked at them under microscopes, electron microscopes, we've done every test we can possibly imagine, and we can find absolutely no difference in wear or degradation between the two boots. But what about the effect of the men and women carrying the goods through the tunnel every day? Is there any effect on them? Now, this is where it gets extremely interesting, of course. It's very important that everybody passes through the tunnel an even number of times during the day. So at the end of the day, when they go home for their meals, they are back to the handedness that they were when they arrived in the morning. Now, I don't know if you know this, but all protein molecules in all life on the Earth are left-handed, which means that they are reversed as they go through the tunnel as well. And the consequence of that is that if you go through the tunnel an odd number of times, then you won't be able to digest your food. So if I had been through seven times, for example, and I tried to digest this orange, I would not be able to do so. In fact, I wouldn't be able to digest any organic matter at all, including meat and dairy products and all sorts of fruit and vegetable. And ultimately, I would starve to death. That is incredible. I believe you carried out similar experiments on a snail? Uh, yes, indeed. And perhaps I should uh, show the photographs directly to the camera. Now, this was the snail before it passed through the tunnel, and you'll notice it has a clockwise spiral. And this was the snail after it had been through the tunnel, and you'll notice, if you look carefully, that the spiral is now anti-clockwise. But, of course, it wasn't just the shell that was reversed, it was all the protein molecules in the whole of the snail's body too. So the snail was no longer able to digest food. We put the snail into a box with all the food it could want and some water to keep it going, of course, uh, but it was unable to digest any of that. That's remarkable. And what was the outcome? What happened to the little fellow? I'm afraid that after about two days, it passed away. We did at the last minute try to rush it back through the tunnel to reverse the handedness again, but I'm afraid we were too late in this case. Now, one thing I do need to ask you, Professor, is why have you waited two years before releasing the details of this momentous discovery? Well, that's an excellent question, of course. And the answer is that my team and I have been trying to reproduce a reversing tunnel in the laboratory. You see, the problem is that we have so many objects around us in our everyday world that could be left or right-handed, but are nearly always manufactured in the right-handed version. And scissors are a classic example, of course. Here's a pair of right-handed scissors, and secateurs, right-handed, just scissors for the garden, really, aren't they? Anything with a spiral, such as 
The bottle openers are generally made to be right-handed and, well, golf clubs, guitars, a whole range of things. What most people don't realise is that rulers are actually made for right-handed people. The zero is at this end and the numbers go up to 30 centimetres here. So a right-handed person would start here and draw a line this way, which suits them, of course. Left-handed people would much prefer the zero to be at this end with the number scale going this way. So if we can eventually manufacture commercial reversing tunnels, we could produce one that's, say, microwave size that you could have in your kitchen or your study. And if you have a left-handed person in your family, you simply buy right-handed scissors, pass them through the tunnel, and there you are, left-handed. And, of course, we could use the same manufacturing techniques as they do in South America. So we could manufacture just one-handed gloves, let's say the left-handed ones, as they do, pass them through the tunnel, and out come the right-handed ones, or we could match them up in the same way. And so, Professor, what progress have you made with your research so far? Well, we do actually have a working tunnel, but it has a small fault, which we're almost at the point of fixing, I believe. And what is the nature of this problem that is holding you up? Well, the problem is this. You see, the tunnel itself is only a few millimetres in diameter at the moment. And so to pass objects through the tunnel, we made a conveyor. And the conveyor belt, well, this is a blown up model, obviously. The conveyor belt was the normal shape, as you would expect. But once this passed through the tunnel, it acquired a twist and became what mathematicians call a Mobius strip. It's like a piece of paper with half a twist just before you join the ends together. We did think that by passing this through the tunnel again, hopefully we'd go back to the original conveyor belt. But unfortunately, it then acquired an extra twist. So here we have a Mobius strip with a full twist in it. Now we think we're on the verge of fixing this and when we do we can then upgrade the size of the machine and start to look at commercial applications. And what about larger objects Professor? I'm thinking particularly of cars. Could a left hand drive car come out as a right hand drive? Do you think you'll ever be able to make a reversing tunnel that could cope with objects that large? Oh, I'm absolutely confident we'll be able to do that. It's just a case of scaling up the technology and making a tunnel of any size that we wish. You're absolutely right to point this out because it's costing manufacturers a huge amount of money every year to produce both left and right-hand drive cars. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just have a tunnel, take a left-hand drive car, pass it through the tunnel, and there you are. There's only one small problem, and that is that the numbers and the letters on the speedometer and the odometer and so on are actually going to be reversed as well. But that's not really a problem because we can leave those items off until the cars pass through the tunnel, and then we can just put those on at the last minute. Just one final question, Professor. Can you give us the exact location of this amazing tunnel in South America? Oh, I'm afraid I can't tell you that at this moment. You'll understand that we have a patent pending on the technology and until that has been registered properly, I'm afraid that's just got to remain our secret. That has been most enlightening, Professor. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Now, if you found the Professor interesting, parents and youngsters, see what he can do to improve your times tables. Go to timestablesforyou.com. The link is up here.